did you guys play Days Gone? I reviewed it when it came out in 2019, and since then we haven't seen a Days Gone 2 sequel, Days Gone 2, the sequel, on the horizon. It's not coming, even after we have now seen a petition with nearly 50,000 signatures for that sequel to be made, and with no word from Sony, the protest still goes on. But yes, no word from Sony yet. So we'll march day and night by the big cooling tower. They have the plans, but we have the power. But this has all come to light from Jason Schreier's recent article, which he talks about Days Gone 2, why it didn't happen. And on top of that, the whole blockbuster thing, the craze for Sony to just chase blockbusters, the safe IP they know they're gonna make money from. Maybe what Days Gone really needed was a small boy in it and they have to journey up a mountain and spread some zombie ashes off a cliff. Are you making your voice deeper? No, you are. You're imitating the God Man. Are you mocking me? Are you mocking me? Stop it, you just didn't do it again. But since then, the creative director and writer from Days Gone has said some colourful things, especially to the audience that bought Days Gone on sale. We'll get into it. He said some very colourful things, and it's pissed a lot of people off, especially on Twitter. All this and more after the drop. Guys, guys, guys. I've realized why we didn't see Days Gone 2. It's because the main guy was a gruff white male protagonist. Shame on you, Sony. Shame on you. And while I'll admit that I initially rolled my eyes at yet another gruff white male protagonist, especially one with such a gruff white male protagonist -y name as Deacon St. John. Send in the clowns. You guys remember that? What a meme. Okay, so Days Gone was released in 2019 to a mixed reception. Some people liked it, some didn't. I personally thought it was fine. It just fit nicely into the pocket of the mid-tier IP that Sony owns. And that's just my observation, but if we really look at the Metacritic score, and just the scores in general, I think it sold accordingly to what other people thought of the game. But we didn't see a sequel. As I said before, through Jason Schreier's article, we found that Sony didn't really have an appetite for Days Gone 2, because it didn't sell as well as they wanted it to, and on top of that, they really want to focus on blockbusters. Big IP, they know people want more of. This fixation on teams that churn out hits is creating unrest across Sony's portfolio of game studios. Oregon-based Sony Bend, best known for the 2019 open-world action game Days Gone, tried unsuccessfully to pitch a sequel that year. According to people familiar with the proposal, although the first game had been profitable, its development had been lengthy and critical reception was mixed, so a Days Gone 2 wasn't seen as a viable option. But well, you can't do this to me. You know how much I sacrificed? This is the world of video games. This is the world of creative projects, movies and music and Sometimes the appetite just isn't there. Sometimes it doesn't sell as well as they wanted, or you know they thought people would just lap it up, but it didn't end up going the way they wanted. What's interesting though, is yes, we have now seen this petition with close to 50,000 people signing it, wanting a Days Gone 2. But here's the thing with these online petitions. A lot of people are just happy to sign it for the meme. Or they want to sign it because they've seen it on Twitter and they know there's a bit of a movement, so they want to see what comes about from it. The petition is easy to sign, there's virtually no barriers to entry to actually sign it, it takes like 20 seconds if that. So it's really hard to know if there's actually a demand for Days Gone 2, or people have just jumped on the momentum of all this. But in the thick of all this, as reported by VGS, Days Gone creator, director and writer John Garvin was having a chat with God of War creator David Jaff on his YouTube show. Garvin, who is no longer with Sony Bend, was asked if he had heard if Days Gone being added to PlayStation Plus collection on PS5 caused a meaningful uptick of engagement with the game. I do have an opinion on something that your audience may find of interest, and it might piss some of them off. If you love a game, buy it at full price. I can't tell you how many times I've seen gamers say, yeah, I got that on sale. I got it through PS Plus, whatever. I mean, first things first, you don't attack an audience for buying a game on sale. If Sony Interactive wants to put a game on sale, of course people are going to gobble up those sales. 
especially if they've wanted to play the game, they haven't got around to it, or, or whatever. The moment they see something on sale, it's not the audience's fault. Of course, if they want to, if they can save money, they're going to do that. You don't walk into a store and say, nope, I want to pay full price for that toaster. I don't want 20% off. What are you talking about? That's not how it works. That's part of the gaming ecosystem. That's not even part of the gaming ecosystem. That's just business in general. Certain things will go on sale at certain times strategically to incentivize spending. And if a game's been out for a certain period of time and it's sold a, a certain amount of copies, at some point we know it's going to go on sale. There are many people out there that don't have the cash spare to go and spend it on a full price game. $80 is a hefty amount to be spending on a full price game. People have bills to pay, people doing life. People just doing life, you know? So you gotta respect that. And if you want people to be in your corner, the last thing you wanna be doing is attacking them. If God of War was on sale, I'm gonna get it for cheaper. I like Corey, I wanna support Corey. Corey's a good dude. He's made a fantastic game and a lot of people wanna support that. In a different universe where that didn't sell as well as it possibly could have, it's still not the audience's responsibility. It's not the audience's decision when things go on sale. It's really Sony. So if he should be angry at anybody, it really should be Sony. But look, the guy's obviously frustrated and that's important to remember. He's obviously put his heart and soul into Days Gone and his ambitions for you know a franchise or at least a sequel to Days Gone hasn't really happened for him. So I think this is probably less a direct attack on people but more of just a moment of frustration. Jaffe responded by asking Garvin, how are you supposed to know if you love a game until you've played it? Oh, got him there. Garvin continued, I'm just saying, you don't. But don't complain if a game doesn't get a sequel if it wasn't supported at launch. It's like God of War got whatever number of millions of sales at launch and you know, Days Gone didn't. I'm just speaking for me personally as a developer. I don't work for Sony. I don't know what the numbers are. Now, I think it's pretty clear that he's talking about the audience not supporting him, but let's just run the numbers. So nearly $8 million was spent in April of 2019 in TV advertising for Days Gone. Video game companies in general that month spent around 30 million. So a big chunk of that was dedicated, especially from Sony, two days gone. Now again, I don't actually think he's talking about Sony, but for good measure, it's important to include those figures so we can at least make the point that I do think that Sony, especially in the marketing department, did in fact support Days Gone's launch. And any short failings in sales probably came from the game not selling well after it was reviewed. A lot of people will wait for a game to come out, look at the Metacritic score, and even look at the user score before they make their decisions. And as I said, it was a mixed reception. To speak to the audience in such a way, to attack them for not buying the game, just leaves a bad taste in everyone's mouth. Let's be real. Now, I don't wanna ham it up, you know? I know it's just a moment of frustration, but the problem here is his next game that comes out in the future, of course, he wanted to rely on as much you know, goodwill and good currency he has with the audience and the relationships that he's built through the years from releasing Days Gone. It just takes one moment like that. It, it tarnishes the relationship that he has with the audience. And now in the future, moments like this are going to haunt him. But guys, we'll have to see what happens here. I'm excited to see what happens if the Days Gone 2 petition actually works. And with comments like this, I wonder... <laughs> I wonder how, if this actually aids or hinders that whole petition. I think it's probably not gonna help, but we'll have to see. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Love you, appreciate you. I will see you probably tomorrow. Lay me down.